Hello, I'm Bella Perez Rubio, Puma Podcast, and you're listening to Teka Teka News. Balitang thinking, hindi breaking. In this episode, obviously, if this was an official trip, if this was about securing investments and the like, then they would be compelled to make an announcement, right? Because uh, the other state will have to receive them officially as well. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. left the country in secret to fly to Singapore to watch the F1 Grand Prix, sparking a furious debate online. Here on Teka Teka, we ask two big questions. Can a president just up and leave without telling the country? And were public funds or resources used for this trip? It took an entire weekend and a flurry of photos posted online for Malacanang to finally confirm that our commander-in-chief had left the country. Cavite 8th District Representative Aniela Tolentino first posted photos on her Instagram showing the president indeed at the F1 circuit. His son, Sandra Marcos, and the president's cousin, Martin Romualdez, both ranking house officials, were also there. Various media outlets picked up those posts before Aniela deleted them. That was on Saturday. Then Press Secretary Trixie Cruz Angeles, who since resigned, only confirmed it on Monday morning. And by then, she didn't have a choice. Because the Singaporean Minister for Manpower, Tansi Leng, had already posted photos of meeting Marcos at the race. So instead, they decided to spin it, with Angeles calling it a productive trip and suggesting he was there to entice investments. Here's what political analyst Jean Franco thought of that. She was being interviewed on One News. It's also very evident that they're trying to control the damage from the criticisms that have been hurled uh, on social media and in various fora. My sense is that they're really emboldened by the 31 million mandate and the fact that they can spin events such as this. That's why they're not even thinking that it is something that can affect them in the long term. So that's what I'm concerned about, actually. This spin is what angered a lot of people. Anyone can see it wasn't an official trip. So the fact that it wasn't announced, that tells us that this trip wasn't official. That's Attorney Michael Yusinko, a policy analyst and constitutionalist. So this was... Likely a trip that was only known to those who went there and those who made the initial or the preparations of arranging the trip for this small group. And so maybe they were thinking, this should we announce this or not? Then probably decided that uh, let's just go and let's see what happens. And so yeah. here we are now. By Monday night, After a whole lot of fuss over the weekend, the president finally broke his silence. He posted on social media. They say that playing golf is the best way to drum up business, but I say it's Formula One. What a productive weekend. It was fulfilling to have been invited alongside several dignitaries and to have met new business friends who showed that they are ready and willing to invest in the Philippines. I'll be sharing more details on this at a later time. That explanation is irrelevant. I mean, what do they say? The end doesn't justify the means, right? So whether or not, we're not even sure about this, no? whether or not investments were secured, relationships were uh, solidified, whatever the case may be, or whatever the spin is, that's really beside the point. That's irrelevant. That's immaterial. So what is the point here? The point here is that the president went overseas, out of the country, unannounced. And the reason why it's wrong is this. The president, by constitutional design, is essentially one of the three branches of our government. Him, the president, is the executive branch. That's the constitutional design. He is both head of government and head of state. So even though the president is still a human being 
and possesses uh, all of the civil rights that you and I possess, the immensity of the responsibility that he bears as the president obviously and naturally limits his movements. No, He cannot just go anywhere he wants to because he is the president. We'll pause here, but when we return, we'll discuss the other big question hounding this trip. Now, the other issue is whether or not Marcos spent public funds to watch the F1 race in Singapore. He was photographed several times within the most exclusive section called the F1 Paddock Club, which is an air-conditioned suite for VVIPs right on top of the pit garages. It comes with an open bar and catering from top chefs and has direct access to the pit lanes, where the cars are. According to Bloomberg, a two-day pass costs $8,500 U.S. dollars per person. That's nearly 500,000 pesos, given the dismal state of the peso right now. When pressed, this is what Marcos's new executive secretary, Lucas Bersamin, had to say about it. You don't need to be too particular about where the funds were sourced. Because he was still performing his job as president when he was abroad. Now, whether it was a fully paid trip or not is irrelevant. Mind you, Bursa Min is a former chief justice, as in someone who should empathize better with our constitutional right to demand accountability from our leaders. But regardless, attorney Michael Yusinko says there are already costs built in whenever the president travels. There is security to think about, his security to think about, which means... Public money must be spent wherever he goes, for whatever reason, right? Economics-wise, uh, I suppose the bottom line is we're going to pay for it. No? Taxpayers are going to pay for it. And that's just the way it is. Eh? Attorney Michael also warned that there are other costs to consider, including the precedent set by these trips and others like them. An unnamed Philippine official told the Associated Press that Marcos, his wife, and two sons actually left for Singapore on Friday aboard a military jet. I think the long-term impact here is, are we going to accept, meaning us, no, voters, are we going to accept uh, public officials disregarding the reality in our country when they perform their functions? Meaning, are we going to allow public officials think about their own comfort, think about their own needs, their own wants, you know, their own comfort over and above what majority of the people are suffering? And of course, there's the whole delicadeza over the president having a good time while victims of super typhoon Carding were still waiting for aid. But Michael says the problem isn't necessarily the trip, but more so, who did he leave in charge? I would be interested to know what the president has done in terms of delegating instructions and directives to address that problem. Because if I just base it on what I read in the newspapers, then it seems uh, the government response is not enough. So that tells me the president needs to do more, right? So if the president needs to do more, then the trip to Singapore, in contrast to that, becomes really even more uh, dodgy, diba? Na Why will you go on a vacation when you still have a lot of work to do here? But that needs to be established first, no? that there is still a lot of government work that needs to be done to address the aftermath of Harding. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council said about a million people were affected by Carding. Twelve are dead, five are missing, and another 67 are injured. The damage to agriculture has hit 3.12 billion. That's on the back of farmers struggling with the price of imported fertilizer and high fuel costs. Which brings us back to the real problem here. It is wrong for the president to move around as if he has no responsibility to us. He has a responsibility to us, 210 million Filipinos. No? We need him to do his job. 
and his job is here. And that was today's episode of Teka Teka. Again, I'm Bella Perez Rubio. This episode was produced by Kat Ventura and edited by Presh Capistrano. If you like this episode, share it with a friend or two. And don't forget to give it a 5-star rating on your podcast app. It really helps get the word out about our show. At para sa mga mahilig manood sa YouTube, Puma Podcast na rin kami doon. Just search Puma Podcast and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for listening. 